Okay, so after my calamitous go at doing a video yesterday, I thought I would give it another go. Um, and this time I'm going to go with the Macaw. Now I've already coloured the one on this page. Um, I did that with the Neo Colours. Um, I've had a few people asking me about doing a colouring for Neo Colours, so I thought I will do another video because that's what the red-tailed hawk one was going to be, but it just didn't work out. So, uh, here's the Macaw. I will use the Neo Colours, and here they are. So you can see all the lovely colours. Now, these are water-soluble, but I'm going to be using them dry. Um, it's just my preferred way of using them at the moment. Um, so I've got my sharpener and you can see like the little bits in the little bits in there as well uh, it probably is a bit wasteful uh, way of using them but it's just how I prefer to use them because um, I like to have a little bit of a point on them as well because I have got some of the other neo colors um, and they don't have a point on them and I can't sharpen them and I do find them quite hard to use and because obviously I'd like a little bit of detail in here um, then that sort of like really helps I can sharpen them um, this is the Dutch version of Intricate Ink Volume 1 um, I know this isn't available everywhere but um, for the people that can get hold of it it is an amazing book the quality of it is just just fantastic the paper is like card um, it's so thick um, so if you do happen to be able to get your hands on one of these, then do so, because you won't regret it, that's for sure. Um, I hope they decide to do the other volumes in this one as well. So um, I've got my trusty magnifying glass, which um, I can see, but I just like to use this for um, all the details and stuff, and I just like getting up close and personal with them. Um, I'm also going to be using these silicon shapers they, these are like um, on the pastels they're great to use because they uh, they move the colour around and they blend it so there's all different shaped ones because um, I think you could use these like for sort of like clay modelling and stuff like that um, I've got different sizes I've got some smaller ones there as well for the more detailed stuff when I don't want to do like sort of like massive strokes um, another thing that I sometimes use but <laughs> I have to say I go against what it says I don't know why but that's just me um, and I do have one of these but I don't use it all the time it's just that um, I like it gives me ideas sometimes on colors um, and it's got like you know information on the back as well but like I say I tend to go against what it says um, although um, some colors just really don't go together which I've learned to my detriment um, but here we go um, I've undecided what colors to use on this and um, I kind of like this tray and thought I would go with these on here um, I think they kind of all go together and everything um, I did red and orange on the other one so I thought I might go so I'm kind of just I don't plan my colouring I just kind of go with the flow and uh, fly by the seat of my pants um, and just see what sort of comes out um, so yeah uh, this is my first talking video and like um, I'm probably nervous and I'll probably ramble and you'll probably hear some I don't know some weird things come out of my mouth then again you might not because I just might not say much but um, I will try and give you some hints on how I colour um, I'm not saying it's the right way I'm just saying it's the way that I colour um, I haven't I'm not professionally trained or anything like that um, I did a little bit at school um, but I'm more of a hands-on rather than a listener if you like um, I learn it much quicker if I'm doing it rather than listening to somebody talking to me about it as such um, but yeah so um, I'm kind of stuck because I don't know quite where to begin on this one um, what colors to do what colors what colors um, I have colored this one once before but in my other volume one and I'm trying to get my head away from the colors that I used on that one which was like purples and stuff um, but oh I can't decide what to do I think I'm gonna go with some pinks and stuff which is kind of like the other one um because I've done the reds I think I'm gonna start with hang on a second 
Mm. Okay. Um, I'm going to pause the video a minute because I can't. Okay, I'm back and I think I've decided I had to pause the camera because I would have sat here for ages and I was literally just sat here in silence looking at colours and thinking, ah, I don't know what to use. So I think I'm going to start off with purple um, and uh, start from there. And then usually the way with my colouring is, is like I'll start with the colour and um, I'll carry on and then like suddenly it all falls together so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to go with the flow um also one something else I will be using and this is my uh, uh black polychromes pencil um only because like just for some of the finer details on here like around here and stuff um with the crayons it's it's, it's quite hard to pick up those details because yes I can sharpen them to a point but it's hard to do the detailing I'll probably use a little bit of both to be honest with you um and that's uh, just what I'll do. So I'm going to start and I'm going to go in up the top here um, and I'm going to go in with um, a dark, this dark purple. What's this one called? This is called Aubergine. So I'm going to go in with Aubergine up the top here. Um, so I've got me a trusty magnifying glass just because I like to see all the details. And then as you can see, I'm just using like light flex as I do this bit and I'm just like you know this is the thing with these pictures um, of Tim's it's like you know the shading is there so it's so cleverly done and a brilliant way to do a colouring book because it just shows you for people that might I mean I didn't know where all the shading and stuff goes um, on these animals but I have learned so much since colouring in Tim's books where to shade and things like that and um i've recently just sort of like got back into drawing myself a little bit um so i'm slowly sort of like teaching myself and um through doing tim's drawings I, and uh, doing this i've learned so much um it's made me understand things a bit more and it's also like on a lot of the uh, sort of like videos and stuff that i've watched you know it talks about you know watching the direction of the fur or the feathers how do they go and then that's how you need to colour so if they're going this way then colour that way don't go against it as such um, and you know sort of like just watch and you know sort of like where these feathers are going so like down here obviously you'd colour them downwards um, and you know it's, it's just taught me a, a whole hell of a lot like since I've been sort of like watching these videos and stuff um, and uh, colouring Tim's drawings um, and I think like I know a lot of people when they get these books uh, of Tim's that they're scared to colour in them. I was one of them. Um, I can't lie. When I got my book, I was like, oh, my God, like these pictures are just so perfect. Um, why do they need anything doing to them? But Tim made them as a colouring book. And there's the clue. They're there to be coloured. Um, and when I got mine, I'd had mine for about two weeks and I uh, I, I didn't colour in it. Um, and then... Uh, I spoke to Tim, I messaged him and asked him and said that, oh, you know, I too have your book and, you know, I haven't coloured in it. And he told me just to jump in like he has done with so many of us. And jump in I did. And nearly two years on and I'm still going and um, I haven't stopped colouring in these books. So um, please, anyone that buys these books, don't be intimidated by them. When you see like pictures that people post and stuff, I see comments on them and comments on my ones I post into different groups, etc. of people saying like, oh, you know, they're such nice drawings, but I'm so intimidated to colour them. You really don't need to be. Um, they really are easier than you think. Um, these books have been created with a colorist in mind um these these books as well they're so well sought out i mean the lay flat binding for somebody who's a lefty like me there's nothing in my way um i can just color and nothing gets in my way at all um so it, it's great um also um you know as i said before the quality in these and not just in the dutch version but in all of the versions the quality of the paper is fantastic um and the quality in this Dutch version is really good for these pastels, I have to say. Um, but also they work really well in the other versions as well. Um, but as you can see, I'm just going through and I'm just doing the darker bits. 
So I've used that colour and now I'm going to go up a little bit lighter because as you can see here, it's starting to go a bit lighter. So here I go in with another different coloured purple. It's only slightly different. Um, this one is called... What's this one called? Lilac. So I'm just going in with the lilac. This is the uh, the set that I've got here of the Neo Colors is the 84 set. Um, they do them in different sizes. Um, they don't come cheap, but what I will say is if you do shop on Amazon, which I know some of you do, um, just be care um, be mindful because they do do warehouse deals, and I've had a few really good bargains with their warehouse deals um, because like and. and all that it's been is that like the tin has been scratched or something like that and there's actually nothing wrong with the product itself um, and I've never I've never had a problem with them at all so it's always worthwhile to look you'll see like there'll be like you know there'll always be like the one that comes up first and then um, on that same post or on that same um, item that's for sale you'll if you look you'll also see that um, there is uh, um, where like warehouse deals and stuff like that or other sellers and if you go in there you'll see if there's any warehouse deals and as I say they're always um, really worthwhile doing I've got these ones um, a bit of a bargain price so I was really happy with that because they don't come cheap um, okay I'm going up to another lighter colour and this one is purple violet and so I'm just going in a little bit lighter so you can see so this is what I mean. See, it's like it's all there for you to be able to to do. And as you can see, I'm literally just doing like light strokes. What I'll do shortly is I'll start to blend these colours in together. And I'll show you how I use the silicon shapers. You can get these on Amazon. As I say, I think um, they use like in clay modelling and stuff like that. Um, so you can use them. You can use them in that. But they are great for... These, because I'm using these um, dry, um, they're great for moving the colours around. Let me just get my... And then I'm just using, um, this is like uh, my Derwent um, sort of like eraser thing, but it's also great for brushing off any of the excess colour and stuff. <clears throat> okay, so um, let me just go back in with this one. Get back in there. So, as you can see I've gone lighter um, I'm going to go back a bit darker again because there's some bits here that need to be a little bit darker back darker again just in here I think I missed this bit it's hard to tell <laughs> So you can see now, you can see like the different colours, I hope you can see that. Let me just zoom in, I won't zoom in too much because, as you can see, right, so hopefully that's not going to be too blurry. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go in lighter, um, with a lighter, actually, I'll go, I'm going to begin with this one. You can see this one's been used rather a lot, and that one is oh, it's just purple. Looks more sort of cerise to me, but hey ho. Um, right, okay. So, I'm just going to come in and bring some of this lighter colour in here. I'm just going to, and as you can see, I'm just doing, I'm doing sort of like longer strokes on this. So you can see it's a little bit different in places, it's not quite so dark. So I'll just do there and then I'll just drop down a colour um, and I'll go back to, back to, ah, where's the colour gone? I can't see it. Oh, back to purple violet because there's a little bit darker bits here. I just want to get in. 
a bit more shady. I mean, you know, if you don't, if you feel like you don't want to follow Tim Shady, you don't have to. But obviously, uh, the way he's done it is like it will bring your picture together in the right way, to be honest. So, um, but if you wanted to experiment and try and do things yourself, then of course you can. Um, you can colour these however you want. You can colour them in shapes and stuff like that. I mean, you know, whichever, whatever takes your fancy. So now I'm going in a little bit lighter with a lighter purple. And this one is called... Oh, it's just move. So lighter there. So you can see there a lighter colour. It's an even lighter, so I'll probably... I don't know whether there is a lighter purple, but I might tip it in a different colour, to be honest, as I'm going along through this. So... That's a little bit there. Let me just turn that down. Uh, so right, uh, you can kind of see the colours now. So what I'm going to do, actually, and I'm going to put in, I'm going to bring in a hint of a greeny colour up here. I always think these colours go together so well so I'm just gonna pop a little bit of it along here in some of these lighter bits just as a bit of a, a contrast and you can see that's picked that up quite nice so I'm just I'm gonna just sharpen this so slightly because I want it to be a bit stronger so here's my little sharpener stick it in and there you go, a bit sharper. Move it back because it's blurry. Right, okay. So, so I hope I haven't bored you all to death <laughs> at the minute. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of going backwards on the strokes of that bit, only because I don't want the colour of the pastels going on to the black because it will just make it look slightly messy. So. I'm kind of going against it there but as you can see that's brought that in and then I'm just gonna bring up this lighter purple again and bring that up to there because when I start to blend I'll blend those probably into that slightly I might even stick some flex through the other bit because some of this will drag into that anyways so I'm just going back in a little bit darker because some of these bits are darker. I need to check my my camera's still recording because it does seem to I don't know whether it overheats or something and it just seems to stop. It's really weird. But I need to so just keep an eye on it. So just so um let's just go get a little bit of a dark bit. So as you can see, this is actually quite quick to do. Um, it doesn't take loads of time and it doesn't take loads of fancy moves, if that's what you want to call it. Um, it's just thinking about like, you know, the, the shading on here, like I say, which is already there. Um, it's already there for you to do. So um, it's not, it, you know, Tim has put it there for you. Am I using the right colour? No, I'm not. Um, the good thing about these pastels as well is if you do make a little bit of a mistake it's really quite easy to cover it up um, so as you can see I'm just gonna run a few flecks of this into the drawing just, just to kind of like bring it together okay so I've sort of Put those in there like that. <clears throat> right, okay, now I'm gonna get the blender out <clears throat> and I'm gonna use the uh the paintbrush one. If anybody wants links or anything like that for these, then I can put those on, that's not a problem. Um I've got these from Amazon, but I would imagine you can get them from anywhere really. And then literally I'm just using it like a paintbrush. 
And I don't know if you can see how it's blending. I'll do this top bit first of all so you can kind of see. So the colours are just running in to the others. And try not to miss any because otherwise you'll get like little I call it grainy they kind of look a little bit grainy but all I'll say is when you're using these is just be mindful of what colors are going where because the color will move it will move out of where it is um, so be careful of like how you're doing your strokes um, let me see if I can zoom in so it doesn't go blurry but see if you can see so I don't know if you can see like here where I've done um, I'll s I hope this isn't blurry for you on the if you go if you go big it might be but um so if you can see up close so yes yeah, so as I was saying just be mindful where you want your colors to go um, because um, they will it will drag the color and it will sort of like knock it into other colours so you might not always want that depending on what picture you're doing on this one um, I do want them to go into each other because um, they're kind of well, they're feathers and it's like you know feathers are never sort of like just all in one place if you like um, you will get sort of like other colours running in well on this McCall you will anyway <laughs> um, Right now, I don't kind of want all the bits going on to the thing, so I am going to just go a little bit backwards here, which I don't kind of want to do, but I'm going to have to just so. And then what I can do is I can touch them up with a little bit of colour, but then I can. So I've brought it back, and now I'm going to bring it just forwards again a little bit. And actually, I use. If I use one of these um, smaller ones, so I'm using, it's like that, if you can see that. So I'm using that just for a little bit more detail so I can get it as much as I can to cover the white. That's the only thing like with these um, crayons is that they are good. I mean, I'm surprised at the detail you can get with them, to be honest. I didn't think you'd be able to. But using that's why I kind of use them dry because I like the detail that I can get out of them. I'm gonna. Oh, oh my camera's collapsed. <laughs> ah. I'm gonna just pull that back slightly because I don't want it to be all blurry for everybody. Um, so here we go. So you can see that colour just pulling along. And like I say, you can use as little or as much force as you want. It's up to you how much you want to drag your colours along. I'm sort of probably using about medium force on this, to be honest, because I don't, I, you know, I don't want to do it too hard because it would drag the colour too far. Um, this is just what I'm finding as I've been doing it. So, 